Chris Cody, I was not trying to embarrass you there. One time when I referred many, many years ago to a manager as a coach, I was immediately corrected by baseball people. And I've also been corrected on referring to it as a locker room. Baseball people don't refer to it as a locker hey, room. Hey, baseball. Hey, yeah. baseball. They got lockers, okay? It's a locker room. And Skip's like, you shut your mouth. It's not a locker room. You, if you want to explain it to him, I don't have to explain it to him. Maybe I've got outdated information. Yeah, Skip, on just this. so you know, Chris one time got a hit off Matt Latos, So Also, yeah, he head JV baseball coach, assistant head coach varsity, third base coach. I got all the signs. Whatever you need, I'm wow. here. Bona fides. I know, I know how to teach people to hit two front foot down. Let's go. Let's stay balanced. Get the hands through the ball. Little hands, get them in. You know, whatever. It's been a while. Keep but them inside the baseball. Can you Chris. teach Jacob Stallings how to not end an inning with runners on? Jeez Louise. <laughs> Whoa. He's a, a big fan, but he's got a lot of opinions also as a fan of your baseball team. Uh, Billy, this is as excited. Uh, the, hey. the, you're in the presence of royalty right here. This is very exciting for you to be with a manager around here who is 11 games over 500 for your favorite team, finally paying attention to your favorite team over the last couple of months, this city, after watching the Panthers and the Heat uh, drown out everything. You know, Skip, this is what I've been thinking, and tell me if you're aligned with me on this. We don't want these fans now. You know what I mean? <laughs> Stay away. Go keep watching the Panthers and Heat and see what they're up to right now because they're not playing. If you weren't here during that run watching the Marlins, we don't want you here. I don't think he's going to say that. That's not the way to go, I don't think I'm aligned. Yeah, I don't think I'm aligned with that. (laughs) (laughs) Billy just wants the easy parking. I think Skip wants as many fans. Yes, Billy does enjoy having the ball. It is great to be in and out sometimes. I'm not going to lie. Stretch out, maybe put my feet up. In and out burger. Yeah. Gosh. (laughs) What had you heard about the franchise before coming here that might have given you some trepidation in that regard? You played here. It's never Mm. felt like a big league market when the Cardinals came into town. Maybe, Maybe it did for a year or two. But we played in cavernous, empty parks for a while around here. Yeah, you're right. Um, when we came into town, it did feel a lot like it was a um, we were a home field. You know, we had a lot of Cardinals um, uh, fans that traveled and that were in the stands. A lot of people from West Palm Beach because of the spring training area. And a lot of Cardinal fans there, so it did feel a lot like the home field advantage. I will say now, um, maybe because the Heat and the Panthers have uh, ended their seasons, um, last night was pretty special. You know, there was a ton of Marlin fans there. Um, Luis Arias is getting a standing ovation before his fifth at bat. Um, It was as loud as MVP chance. Yeah, yeah. It was as loud as as I've, since I've been a manager, or even um, as a player, for Marlins fans to be, you know, on the home side or homers type deal. And uh, and so it was a pretty special night last night. Were people warning you, though, like, be careful with that franchise? They've got a history of blank and blank and blank. Or did you have any worries about this being a good first job for you? Because a first job can become a last job very quickly if you don't do it with the right support for management. Yeah, I think the, the worry for me was not having guys around me that I could trust. That was the only worry because you look at the rotation – you're pretty excited about that. You look at some superstars you already had on your roster. You're pretty excited about that. The wor- the only worry I've ever had was, am I able to control or help the clubhouse, uh, not the not the locker room, the clubhouse, um, and and be able to provide an environment where people are having fun to come into the yard every day. The only way to do that is to have really good people, like I said before, around me to provide that atmosphere. Did you practice the walk out to the mound to get pitchers like before you did this your first game? Because you've perfected it, dude. Your pace is perfect. You have this just demeanor of it's just I want to play for I just just the way you walk out there. It's like it's 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 what's the word? I'm going to find the phrase. Hold on. We'll wait. We'll wait. Just go on. Keep talking. It's. Keep talking. You were the <laughs> only one talking. We needed your Hold on, help. No, no, no. Don't worry. Don't worry. You got time, it. man. Don't He's, worry yeah, about don't worry. it. Uh, He's got the good saunter though. He there. saunters. That's a good. That's a good word. Swagger. Yeah. Did he? Has he practiced? It's a forthright saunter. What? Is what, it is. what are you looking for, Chris? You've slowed down. He just the show. He's, he's just looking around the room, spoken. asking us. So did you practice? Or Unbecoming did you not is a word that he used. I, I don't think that's right. Practice what, Chris? Just let him answer the question. Did you? Yeah, practice? What is yeah. the question? <laughs> no, I have a question. I, did you practice it? I well, I was admit it. Coach. You walked out on per. I was a bench coach for a few years. Chris, go sit in the penalty box. Managers were tossed. Underspoken. That's not, that's not a word. Spoken. What does that mean? Underspoken. He's understated. A- understated. Hey, that's hey, what that is. Hey, hey, underspoken. Hey, you did it. Hey. Understated. That's what it was. I, but did you practice it? Well, I'll hang up and listen. I, yeah, I had practice. When your wife was giving birth, did you practice walking out? <laughs> no. Oh. No, no. I, I was bench coach. A couple managers were tossed. 
So then you make pitching changes. So I guess that was practice. Yeah. When you go out to make a <laughs> pitching change, uh, what, what is a sign of disrespect you won't tolerate? Is it the pitcher flipping the ball to you? Is it him putting it in your hand too hard? What is the unwritten rule there, or is it a spoken rule that, hey, when I come out to make a pitching change, do this or don't do that? A few things. I want you to be upset or frustrated sometimes, right? Because sometimes they didn't do their job, and, and that's okay to be upset. This is a hard game to be perfect at. You're, no one's ever perfect. So sometimes I have to make tough decisions and take the ball out of guys' hands when they think they're the best option. So I understand some of the frustration. Um, I do think that if you're coming off the mound and, and on the grass before I get to the mound, that's number one, because sometimes I'm not going to take you out. Maybe that's the first mound visit. Mm -hmm. Number two, I think the flipping the ball is not going to happen. Taking the ball with you, that's not going to happen. Um, and so I think, you know, a couple of those things um, will be non-negotiables for me. And I will never show up somebody on the mound, but they will have a conversation maybe post-game or the next day. So when Trevor Bauer turns and throws the ball over the center field wall, <laughs> that's not something you would like. I think Francona handled that perfectly. Sandy has been known to be someone who will bark Don Mattingly back to the mound. Has that happened? Because he hasn't. He's, his ERA is near five. He has not been very good this year. Certainly not Cy Young worthy. Have you had any of that with him this year? Where it's like, get out of here. I've got this. He's never said that. I could feel it <laughs> from the mound or inside the dugout. Again, you want to, you want to feel like you're the best option. I remember CC Sabathia saying, "I'm only giving the ball to uh, Mariano Rivera. That's it." I'm the best option you have in the bullpen. You want your ace to feel that way, right? I've played with Kershaw's and Wainwrights and Chris Carpenter's and some really good pitchers that they feel like they're the best option. So I understand that. I've played with Hall of Fame pitchers and I've coached with Hall of Fame pitchers. Um, I owe, I'm okay with him being frustrated. That's okay. That's part of it. That's part of the growth. Let me, I think... I know this wasn't your question, but I, I want to get back to the WBC affecting some of these guys, including Sandy. The preparation was you have to be you're, – you're pitching for your country so early in the season, and you have to be on point. That's a lot of pressure. It's, after pitching 230 innings, that is not easy to do. So your preparation is out of whack. And if you look at a lot of these guys that pitched in the WBC, they've been off to slow starts. I do think all the pitch characteristics are there. Throw 98 miles an hour, good sink, good slider. The location might be a little bit different than what he's used to. He'll get back to where he needs to be. We've been on a run with him being a little bit frustrated, no doubt. What happens when he gets hot? And that's what I'm, I'm looking forward to. And a lot of guys have picked up, you know, some guys that have not felt really good about their season so far. But, man, he's going to be really good for us. Who's the teammate out. that you had, one, if I make you pick only one, that most consistently awed you? Pick one that I'm sorry I don't that know. awed you the most that you were the most yeah. awed by. I mean, I'm thinking, of course, Pujols is in that category. But once you started mentioning Hall of Fame pitchers as well, I'm like, okay, maybe there's somebody else that that he. If if I made him pick only one, a teammate that had that he that you were just like, I can't, I don't understand how that person can do this that well. Yeah, it, it's so it's two guys, and one's going to surprise you. Um, Albert Pujols hit 700 home runs. I was there for his 700th. I was there for two of his MVPs. Um, when you needed a big hit or a home run, he was going to provide it. What he did for me at second base and taking balls when he was playing first base so I wouldn't make the air early on. I mean, the guy is, is phenomenal, a phenomenal human being, by the way, also. That, that part is odd me. Three home runs in the World Series. I can go on and on about the guy. The next guy that's the biggest freak I've ever been around – physically tool wise was Fernando Tatis Jr. Um, when I was watching him at 16 years old up at the system in San Diego, he can just do things that guys can't do in this game at such a young age. So that probably has been the, the wow. Uh, moment. At that size too. I don't understand how it emerges from that body type. I don't know how he has that bat speed to do all of, to generate that kind of power when it looks like he's, he's, you know, weighs a buck 50. What'd you make of David free saying he, he wasn't worthy of the Cardinals hall of fame? David Freeze, one of my good buddies. Um, I know that was not an easy decision for him to make. I think there's a couple factors uh, that go along with it. Um, you know, I'm not going to get on the personal side of it, but I, uh, but I do feel like you know maybe some of it, for whatever reason, maybe he didn't feel like he was worthy to be standing next to some of these guys. You know, 
God rest her soul, the, the you know Bob Gibsons and you know Loop Rocks, but now that they're with um, you know some other big name Hall of Famers standing there, he, he for whatever reason he didn't feel like he was worthy enough to be there, even though we don't win that 2011 World Series without the big home run or big triple. Um, so it, it's just a really tough decision for him, but um, man, it's it's uh, it shows you what kind of person he is also. Did he seek your advice? He did not. He doesn't need to seek my advice on that one, yeah. What would you yeah, have told him, though? I think it's special to put on that red jacket. Uh, if you're a St. Louis Cardinal, you know the meaning behind that. And I think that was what made it so tough for him to do is to put on the red jacket um, and everything that goes along with it. I think he is deserving and should have put on that red jacket because I think of him as a Cardinal Hall of Famer. And I always will just because he doesn't have that red jacket. Look at me, Lou Brock. I think you were saying, weren't you saying back there, Billy? Or who was saying earlier in the show that Freeze was making a big show of not, uh, was it Stu Gatz? It was, who was Stugatz, saying that? Yeah. yeah, of course it was. It was. Yeah. <laughs> that he was making a big show, bringing more, yet more attention to himself right. by declining the, uh, the Hall of Fame offer. Now, I haven't seen a lot of examples of a guy who says, you know what? Not worthy of the Hall of what Fame. What are you going to do when they offer it to you, Skip? Are you going to say yes or no? <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen for me, yeah. What, uh, what is it that you look at as the greatest challenge beyond, saying, meeting the 200 employees? Is there another one that you have faced uh, this year uh, that you've been like, man, this, is, this has been hard? Yeah, I think blending analytics with, um, you know, uh, the baseball staff and um, uh, players and making sure that they understand what numbers mean and what their what stuff is relatable, what's not relatable. How do we message that um, to guys that, you know, maybe want it, don't want it, but could really help them? Um, you know, being in my my seat, I, I need all the information possible to deliver to the players. And if they aren't feeling they're getting everything, they're going to look for an outside source to get it from. And there's a lot of these drive lines and different facilities that you can get information from. So we want to be able to provide everything, and I just have to make sure that we're providing everything uh, possible. I'll skip this. This is the new and unimproved Dan Levatar show with the Stugats. Gamble on by DraftKings. Chris Cody, your father right now, I think he's had some experience over the years pouring diet sodas and pouring things into his thermos. He just overflowed, completely mistimed and misjudged everything he was doing. There is now diet soda stain all over our new carpets because your father continually comes in here and is a toddler. He is someone that you... Uh, get more frustrated with than your young daughter because your young daughter is no longer a toddler and your your her grandfather now is. Dad, is that the first time today you spilled something? I think so. Could be. What about at the coffee shop we were at? Oh yeah, yeah, that was a bad one. You know, it's that was uh, a taco in my throat, by the way. <laughs> they fill it up too much, and you know, you gotta in order to pour from a a coffee cup. I in, regret into going this, to this. You need to do the V. You know, you need to. Yeah, he's right. Yeah, you need to do the V. And when it's filled up that much, you can't do it. You could take a sip of it before you do the V. No, I got to do the V. Got to do the V. Billy's I, got me. I don't know who embarrassed me the most around the manager of the Marlins, but I'm just going to say all of you. There were lots of options. What? Yeah. <laughs> just so you know, TV, you had a bad angle. You were looking at him straight on from the side, my view. God, his chest. He's fantastic. a god. Yeah. Dude, his abs. Like, I've never seen anything that flat washboard we tried to get some advice as he was leaving it didn't work mike ryan asked him for advice on fitness and he said don't eat after 7 p.m thanks that's a classic no yeah. he also said i was like all right there's got to be something else because i try that and he's like i'm you cut out carbs he's like no I eat carbs i'm like bull there's yeah. good uh, carbs and bad carbs yeah. though mike yeah so they say i'm like you, you must not drink alcohol he's they're like, all no, good to no, me I, I drink some alcohol i do Two bourbons and, I, and I'm good. I'm like, I've been doing three times as much and it doesn't help me. Yeah. All of you were embarrassing. Who was the most embarrassing? Well, I didn't do anything. What Mike did I, do? I, I, didn't I do don't feel like I, I was do sitting here. <laughs> Mike came in and said, Me and Skip are really good friends now. So I don't know what it is that they were talking about. Oh, I was boy. informed that I left him hanging when he came in and went to say hello for four seconds, which was not my intention because power he, move. Well, no, because here's the thing is that. 
I did a, an interview with him in the off season, like for this Marlins hot stove show. And for sure, he doesn't remember that because he's spoken to many people since then, right? So my play was I'll go and I'll say hello to the person that brought him here who's in charge of media relations. So I'll say hello to that person. That person knows me. And then we'll do like a turn and introduction. Hey, blah, blah, blah. But what I didn't see is that his hand was out and he was trying to say hello. And then he hit me with good to see you again, which I know is probably fed to him. There's no way he remembers me. That's how you play it. But I definitely left him kind of hanging there. So that was embarrassing. And then Chris forgot how to speak for a little bit. That was a little bit embarrassing. Yeah. I also didn't do this, Dan, on air because I didn't want to put you in a weird spot. But you were saying that he was the hottest manager in baseball, right? Is that what you, what you just yeah. said about him? Yep. So right before the interview started, Hildy was there. And she's like, he can come back anytime. And she goes, he's the That's second amazing. hottest manager in baseball. And I go, really? Who's the hottest? And she's like, the manager in California. She's talking about Gabe Kapler. Kapler. Yeah. yeah. So then, I but I did. That'd be funny if she said the Marlins manager. Well, I didn't want to bring up. I didn't want to bring up Gabe Kapler to skip in case they have some sort of you know rivalry. Best going looking on. rivalry. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's weird. Who is fitter between them? Because Kapler is muscles on Kapler's top of just muscles. bigger. Yeah, reckless speculation. I feel like he is bigger. I know I he's know, bigger. I don't know if he's hotter, but I I think you all embarrassed me pretty profoundly. Not he, me. He not Greg. No. Not not me either. I mean, he he, uh, he slipped me a little note as he was leaving. He didn't really. And it go. said, I like, No, no. I, well, I, hold on. This embarrassing be true. you now. The note, the note said, I like Chunkiller. I like you best. Skip. Wow. <laughs> Do you still have it? Yeah, see if maybe it's... There it is. There it is. I mean... You couldn't have made it up. <laughs> it really does say that. No way. Well, yeah, but he, it's, it's his handwriting. Wow. It's Greg's, it's Greg's what? handwriting. Wow. What are you talking about? <laughs> He's been pl he planted that joke. You owe Greg an apology. You think I'm the only one who has these legal pads? <laughs> yeah, come on, man. Come it's on. clearly man. your handwriting. All right, bring I, in an, an analysis on he, that. He did say on his way out that that's the most enjoyable interview he's ever done. You're I think welcome. he says that every time that he leaves. He knows how to play the game, man. You all embarrassed me. Uh, no one more than Mike Ryan saying, I do believe we've developed a friendship, a kinship. We now are aligned, me and Skip. Yeah, no, we had 15 minutes together after uh, Billy left him hanging. I seized an opportunity. That was on purpose. Well, that was an accident. He, he introduced himself by saying, big fan. And of course, I said, no pictures, please. But then I found out he was a manager of the Marlins and we got along swimmingly. He claims to be a big fan of our show. I think he was uh, he was just being nice about things. He couldn't have been a fan about the way you guys were objectifying him. He I only objectified him after, like when he was leaving. Then I started objectifying him because we he was walking away. Time. Oh, you were doing it. The I everybody see. was. You guys were talking baseball. I was like, eh. no. Peace and, out. And his I'll body. Just go it wasn't eat. just baseball. It was also the way that he takes care of himself. He's got yeah. a very good jawline, and you can see Understated, his abs through actually. his shirt. Yeah, it's a great jawline. One of the things that I wanted to get to, and I want to be clear here on the front end, that this is not directed primarily at Craig Carton, who has said publicly in a way that is very accountable that all of his mistakes that made him a prison number uh, are damaging. And I believe in general terms, in everyone deserving second chances especially, and in cases where they have paid in a way that is punitive for their crimes in this case or their mistakes when they don't elevate to crimes. So I want to make that clear on the front end that I don't want to rip a guy who had a gambling problem who is a convicted felon for having a gambling problem. Addiction grabs human beings and can be difficult. Thank you. But as it relates to our sorry, sad sack, awful industry that employs people who are largely interchangeable, the idea that Fox would give a convicted felon a promotion when that opportunity would never go in my history doing this to somebody who isn't white is such an indictment of everything around me that I find it deeply offensive about our industry 
that that after making that mistake in an in a on a platform, Greg Cody, we are so interchangeable, all of us. The idea that Craig Carton, who recently said of Shohei Otani, wake me up when he makes the postseason. Shohei Otani, who leads the Angels, Greg, in runs, hits, home runs, walks, RBI, stolen bases, average, on-base percentage, slugging, OPS, wins, strikeouts, and earn run average. He should make the playoffs then. <laughs> it's a good Plus, take. He doesn't lead the team in doubles. So you're talking oh, about – can't be that good. And Mike Trout is on the team exactly. too. Brandon Jury at least so, in the doubles. How about triples? So the former felon that Fox hired was Craig Carton and not Michael Pompeo. I was way off. It is an indictment of the industry He at doesn't large. lead in doubles. It's such a great comment. <laughs> or triples, I guess. Yes, he doesn't lead in triples as well. Does he lead does in lead in triples. He oh, does, does he? Yeah, walks, he leads in triples. It's walks and doubles <laughs> yeah. oh, as a hitter. Don't no, I think him. he leads in walks. Mike Mike Trout has 39 walks. Shohei Otani has 38. Oh, wow. he led, slacker. When I got the stat, he led. Mike Trout passed him and walked. Mike Trout wants him to leave, right? No. No, they're finally good. No. Well, oh, they're all right. They're in the hunt. Uh, no, they're, they're 41 and 33, standings Mike. Could you imagine being as overwhelmingly incredible at your sport as Mike Trout is and being very obviously the second best player on your team? He was the greatest player in the history of the world forever, right. and then his teammates better than him. Yeah. He wants him to leave, right? No. He, gets, he wants him to go. He wants to make the playoffs. No, he wants to be the best again. What? Not where I was going with any of this. I appreciate the detour as I uh, Carton. as I do all the time. Uh, but what an indictment of our industry at large, honestly, that that is something that's happening when we're all really disposable and the idea that someone would have that kind of offer to remake their career, it's stupefying. It's just not something that would happen in many other places, and it's not something certainly that would happen when uh, somebody was a convicted felon and not a white person. It just It's not something that would have any precedent in this business. I don't know if it bothers the audience at large, but it just speaks so ill of what is our industry. Do you, do you really think that, that there's that much disposability in this industry? I mean, when, yes. I, when I think of somebody like Stephen A. Smith, I don't think of him as being disposable. I think of him as being one of a kind, unique, and and the opposite of disposable. I think that the platforms, if I give them to just about anybody, and they have given them to just about any of anybody, we are proof of that. That people can have success if you give them the platforms. The platforms are the ones that are responsible. Hell, Stephen A. Smith failed on that platform and then made his way back. It doesn't mean he's not unique. You went to the top of the food chain. I will tell you that drive time hosts in America, drive time radio hosts. Totally interchangeable. Um, usually people do like a comeback story, and I think it's pretty irrefutable that Carton is a comeback story. He lost a lot, not just his profession, but it, but his family. Um, I don't necessarily think I have opinions on the matter because I don't watch what he does. I watch it on mute and find it curious that Craig Carton is talking to Tim Hardaway about Messi going to Miami. I'm sure, I'm sure it's a fine show. But uh, Peter Rosenberg, who I respect greatly in this industry, had this seemingly to say about Craig Carton. LOL, the dude that committed fraud, embarrassed the whole station, went to jail, was accepted back by them, did well, and immediately leaves for more money. Wow, you can't write it. Again, I will go back to he has suffered by his own doing and by his own admission and has been accountable to that suffering. He takes all the blame for everything that happened there and should and I do like comeback stories, and I like forgiveness. So I say again, not about him. You could just make him an avatar. You can make him a symbol. Like, I'm not talking about him. Just convicted felon X being able to climb back up the ladder when convicted You seem to be only giving details about him. Well, but he's the only one that has this precedent. Forgive others, too. Yeah. Forgive, Forgive others, others too. too. Forgive, Forgive others, too. too. Forgive, forgive everybody yeah, for, forgive their, everyone. For, for, forgive for their mistakes everyone. and everyone else. Literally everybody. doing everybody. a show everybody. next to Tim Hardaway. <laughs> you, think, you think Skip drives to California to get in and out? <laughs> what does this take? 
But is Craig <laughs> Carton that good? Like, I don't know is his game. Is that Bishop game. to Rook 9? I think I it's Bishop to Rook 9. I don't know him on the air, uh, honestly. I don't know whether he deserves this, whether he doesn't. Tell me. This is a new and unimproved Dan Levatar show with the Stugats. Gamble on by DraftKings. Tell me that you guys can fill in some of the details for me on Drake having a basketball league in his home that he won and celebrated in his home with a press conference and an after party because he beat the guys in his home at a basketball tournament. Somebody on his team drained a jumper, and then there was an after party and a press conference. Please give me as many details as you guys can. Uh, that can be reported on, on on exactly the life I think we would all create if we could for ourselves, if we could create a fantasy land out of our own athletic exploits. I like what a dork he is. Yeah. And it used to be held against him, but now as he's aged and his fan base has aged along with him to a degree, everyone just understands who he is, yeah. that he uses this fame to do the dorky sports stuff that – Deep down in your heart of hearts, you wish you could do. Is this what Tony does with Ron McGill? <laughs> Again, Ron has been retired. We haven't seen Ron on the court in a long time, but I would definitely like to be part of this league if Drake has an invitation. I would I would be a spot-up shooter on his team. Uh, Ron McGill is not with us today because he is saving sea turtles. Uh, I how, don't... how do you think your game would pair well with his? Because, like, you asked I think Max he's more Struth. of a facilitator, though, so I think yeah. it would be good spot, spot, spot shooting. Yeah. yeah. Did you guys also see what Rob Manfred had to say about the A's reverse boycott situation? Because uh, Rob Manfred, I think people who have been listening to the show for a long time, understand that some of these commissioners are running a giant grift. And in the case of baseball, it's just been so wonderful and funny to watch after they didn't want to compromise themselves with putting Spider-Man on the bases. They now have Corona embedded in the mound and advertising all over the place because they're grabbing every last dollar because that's what the commissioner's job is to make them every last dollar. It doesn't matter how it looks, how greedy it is for him to say of the, re the reverse boycott in Oakland where people went to chant, sell the team. This is the quote. I mean, it was great. It was great to see what is basically an average major league crowd in that facility for one night. It's a great thing. Wow. You can't make up somebody being more tone deaf than that. To think that a reverse boycott of baseball just bleeping your city a city that cares about baseball, but because it's been run so poorly and so greedily in that market that the commissioner of the sport can sit there, the guy who pantomimed a golf swing during the lockout before doing his press conference. You think he was practicing that during the yeah. birth of his child? Or? <laughs> yeah. You thought it was bad. Chris had one in the chamber that he was going to unleash on Skip that he decided not to ask, that I was the only one pushing saying that's a good idea. So you know it wasn't. It was a bad if he brought it in the bedroom, you know, yeah, you know, uh -huh. mid, you know, just in the middle of what in the middle on, of calling time for your wife, <laughs> stepping out of the batter's box and just doing a dry swing, swinging it, dry swing, <laughs> dry swing. That's what it's. Like that. That's what it's called. Wife would be going to the bullpen. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa. Is what that does the, that mean? Would the wife be making the call to the bullpen? Yep. Yep. Uh, so Drake said, I did what Kobe did in game seven against the Celtics. Shots not falling, you play effing defense. Yeah, <laughs> it's a three on three league, by the way, Dan. Last time he won not championship, he bought his team or himself a hundred thousand dollar championship ring. I'm telling you. The, the thing is, is Drake's actually not a fan of his team in this league because he knows they would just lose if he was. So he roots for another team in the league, not the one he plays for. There's a joke there. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's the word? <laughs> There's people laughing right now listening to their podcast for sure. <laughs> Roy, w workshop it. Why yes, Dan. did you just in the bedroom tap your right arm to call for a relief pitcher in the bedroom? That's why? what his wife's doing. We all wish we could do that. <laughs> we do? <laughs> why are we doubling down? You guys have never been in the throes of it Let's and go. said to yourself, man, I, I need a reliever here because no. I'm about done. Let's stop. 
Okay, Billy. Nine inning Billy over here. <laughs> Complete game. Complete game, Billy. <laughs> CGB. I believe Billy does have a complete game. I believe that I bill I believe that uh, among us, understated Billy is the one Underspoken. What about a perfect game though? CGB. I get the save. That's right. I, I thought, can't believe Skip gave you that note. Yeah, he did. You know what? Why didn't I save it? I should have framed it by now. Yeah. Uh, uh, you did save it. You threw it in the garbage can and then retrieved it and it had your handwriting on it. Uh Billy Liar. Did you see who was in the mix to replace Carton? Liar. Who's that, Mike? Turtle from Entourage. Oh, what? Oh, Whoa! What? <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. How are they mean? doing their hiring over there? <laughs> I think they just have a general look and then they go. Well, I think it's going to be Tiki Barber. So that's going to basically uh, confound some people. Speaking of people in the media that don't get chances. <laughs> I imagine Tiki Barber wakes up shaking a fist at Michael Strahan every morning for stealing his career, his identity, his all his television jobs. I thought of you this weekend, Billy, because Jose Canseco tweeted that aliens visited him and told him where to find a family of Bigfoot and that the aliens wanted to adopt him. Dude, I yeah, I gotta get whatever Jose's on. That yeah. stuff is strong. Can we see some of this <laughs> finally? Like, can we see an alien or a Bigfoot or some big feet or something? I'm, I'm good. Just, I'm good not seeing one. Why? I just I want to believe him so bad because I feel like why would he be making this up, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> there is like a working theory exactly. that. If we see one, we wouldn't believe it's real. Yeah. It could be as authenticated because our brains are just too small to process small us not being the center of the universe. That we'd just rather go on being agnostic about alien life because it, it just complicates things too much. It complicates all our deities. It, it complicates our own mortality. And so we'll just continue to pretend, even if an alien decides to throw a, a Drake press conference, yeah. that we're just going to assume it's artificial intelligence. But you say about aliens, what about Bigfoot life? Yeah. Same. Great Same, question. you think? Same. We don't, we, we'd like to think we that question we know it all already. I speak from experience. Oh. It's like, there can't be something out there that we don't know yet. What if we're the smart ones? Like, the aliens are stupid. Wow. Yeah. Like, we always assume the aliens are, like, this smarter existence that's out there that can do all these things. That we can. What if we're the smartest ones in the galaxy? Well, that was kind of the whole idea behind War of the Worlds, which has one of the worst movie endings ever, which is they get here, they destroy our entire planet and realize, ooh, bacteria. Spoiler oh. alert. Jeez, I haven't seen that one yet. We can get Seriously. sick. Way to ruin it. Weren't there uh, aliens... Uh, in Vegas real recently oh, on man. video, eight Aliens feet are tall, everywhere, Dan. eight feet tall and so, seen with uh, bulging eyes and uh, typical alien uh, uh, The bulging eyes? That was William Carlson <laughs> at the uh, the Vegas <laughs> Golden Night Parade. Let's play that sound, uh, Chris Cody, for the people. We've got a lot of drunken parade sound available to us because uh, Bruce Brown was shirtless and saying to anyone who would listen, I can't believe Jokic got me that drunk. He said he was feeling it bad. Jokic went from I don't want to do parades to I can't get enough bleeping parades, and then he's in Vegas, and now he is indeed with his horses. Uh, Michael Malone, as I mentioned before, I did Fred uh, Fred Durst and Limp Biscuit. Is there a more modern reference for the look that he's going flat-brimmed cap with sunglasses and a shirt that reads, put that in your pipe and smoke it? I'd probably say Paul Wall is the more relevant one. It's not really more recent. Uh, and Fred Durst? I mean, it's, I mean talking about the yachts here. Uh, let's go ahead and play the Carlson sound of drunken parade stuff that South Florida is trying to avoid. So, um, this guy, this effing guy. Yeah, I know, I know. Riley. So, Riley. he was here, they won. Yeah. And I know you have been here day one. You guys are so amazing. Yeah. We played Arizona in the first game and we beat the out of them 
game. One game series. No points. No points. But that's okay. Because at year one, I was pretty great. <laughs> but you guys were greater. And we've been up and down on this journey to the cup. <laughs> Pass it to Marshy. Marshy, you got something to say? No, 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 no. Listen to me. We've been waiting for six long years for this guy to be MVP. Jonathan Marshesa. In the middle of that, he made love to the air. Old, complete game, Carlson. Poor Marcy. Uh, PR came and tried to cut it off. Just trying to pull him off stage. <laughs> Literally dragging him off the stage by his arm. She goes, we got to go. Yeah. <laughs> Where that was, was he? Is the, is the Spectrum then uh, Malone? Well, there was a lot of shirtlessness, so it's the Spectrum of drinking. Malone, Carlson, Huggins? I mean, point two. Malone, Carlson, <laughs> Huggins, Pittsburgh Pirates bus driver getting arrested for DUI even though they had a police convoy this weekend? Or Mike at the 17th hole in Tahoe. <laughs> My tongue is so heavy. Let's have Mike Malone uh, telling you to put it in your pipe and smoke it with the flat brim and the sunglasses and the giant chain. Is Brucey B going anywhere? Hell no. Hell no. Hell no. Hey, we run this back. We run this back. Get loud. He became the doctor of thugonomics. <laughs> he did. He did a personal interview too, though, like off to the side where he's like, "We're getting another one," and I'm out. Get loud. <laughs> and I'm out. He said, like he's yelling at the camera, and I'm out. Have you avoided these things, Cody? Or you've eaten them up. Like you, most South Florida fans have avoided most of these celebrations. I feel like. Yeah. We... This is a new and unimproved Dan Levatar show with the Stugats.